10 U.S. cities that don't necessarily get the respect they deserve. Coming up next. This is City Nerd, weekly content on cities and transportation. Viewer suggested topics, always appreciated, down in the comments. And in my pandemic transit video a couple weeks back, I did my usual thing where I picked a stadium I could fill with all the channel subscribers, which I mostly do to mask my obvious insecurities, but I also do as a way to provide I don't know, stunningly insightful commentary. Anyway, in that video, I included an aside about how overpriced a city like Boise is compared to a city with actual urban amenities like St. Louis. I only spent a few seconds on it, but it generated lots of discussion down in the comments, which is always good for the trusty algo. Anyway, I do look at the comments, and I really liked this one from viewer Nia Roundtree. My fiance and I live in Chicago and love it, but we want to find a warmer quote unquote Chicago that's not outrageously expensive like San Francisco. We looked at Austin and Boise. It keeps me up at night trying to figure out how people rationalize the home prices based on what these cities offer. I'd rather live in the cold than be bored. 100%. So what I'm gonna give you today is the 10 most undervalued or underrated US cities. And I'm gonna use some measurable criteria, but I don't wanna pretend like this is an objective analysis. The criteria I choose and the relative weight I give them is all based on how I see things and what I value. So this is only gonna be a useful list in as much as you care about the same things I care about. So for any list of undervalued things to make sense, you have to define a baseline value you're comparing against. And what I'm using is the Zillow Home Value Index, or ZHVI, which provides the quote-unquote typical home value, not to be confused with the median value, of a home for each metropolitan region. And I have to address this. One argument you'll hear is that the prevailing price for a good or service is just a representation of what people are willing to pay for it. So therefore, there is no such thing as undervalued or overvalued. This is what we call the efficient market hypothesis. And in this case, I just say hogwash. The market is a complex dance of millions of actors who all have different values and preferences. And this list is basically a reflection of just one person's values and preferences. So to decide if something was undervalued or not, I came up with a very tortured calculation that combined all the things I care about in a city and spit out a value I could compare to the ZHVI. I'm not gonna dwell on what's in the actual calculation because I don't wanna give the impression that there's anything about this that isn't just completely subjective. So for my criteria, my one pass fail was city size. I only looked at metro areas over 250,000 because eh, I wanna live in a city. As for what went into that calculation, first transit supply, because I always wanna be able to live car free or car light. I used the National Transit Database to aggregate all vehicle revenue hours for all agencies in each metro area in 2019. And I applied bonus factors for modes that are higher capacity and operate at least partly on dedicated right of way, like light rail. And I did a double bonus for heavy rail and regional rail. Also, I want a city where I can walk and bike, so I used walk score and bike score ratings in my formula. Also, you know I don't like cities where the urban fabric is disrupted by the physical barriers and noise of freeways. So I calculated the freeway miles per capita for each metro area. I included factors for cultural amenities and sports, which I feel like are important to have in a city, and convenient air and rail connections to other cities was important as well. I did include a factor for weather. Mild temperatures all year are great, but let's be real, the places that have them are crazy expensive. And finally, I had a factor for cost of living index. Okay, that covers the preliminaries, so let's get into it. Number 10 is New York. You might question how New York can possibly be underrated. Well, consider that a typical home value in the New York metro area is less than half of what it is in the Bay Area, and about the same as in Austin, Texas. Seriously, what does New York not be all those cities in, except weather? It has more than twice as much transit provision as any city on this list, 
And I'm not just talking about subways. In my videos on regional rail and the Port Authority bus terminal, I talked about how the suburbs here are just built different and most of them have great transit service. So is New York City affordable? Well, yeah, not if you wanna live in the Upper West Side and go to bougie restaurants every night, but there are still a lot of great affordable neighborhoods and nearby towns. In the big picture, in my opinion, New York is still undervalued. Number nine is the Twin Cities. I know what you're thinking. If a city is cold enough to have a network of heated skywalks, you don't want any part of it. Well, let's get some perspective. The weather is frickin' freezing in the winter, but the spring and fall can be pleasant, and summers in the Twin Cities are great. Transit is good. There's a solid little light rail network. But really, what puts the Twin Cities over the top is the walking and biking. It's got a great park system and a great multi-use path system. And it actually is tied with Portland for highest bike score rating out of all the cities I looked at. Number eight is St. Louis, which I just think is a shockingly affordable city. I've already praised St. Louis's urban fabric, which I absolutely love in other videos. What I haven't mentioned is the metro area actually has the highest number of freeway lane miles per capita of any city on this list. So you do need to pick your spots. Also, I have to address this because it did come up in the comments on the video where I compared Boise to St. Louis. People pointed out that it's the homicide capital of the US and that is true and bad. I do realize a lot of people look at things like crime rates and school test scores when they're trying to figure out where to live. And I would just interrogate this a bit. I didn't use anything like that in my criteria. First, I just don't find that it's all that relevant at larger geographic scales. And more than that, this kind of stuff tends to be, I don't know, racially coded in a way that's pretty unsavory. In my life, I've definitely gone to school and or lived in neighborhoods that had lower test scores or higher crime, wink wink. But those are some of the best neighborhoods I've lived in and they're experiences I wouldn't trade for anything. Just food for thought. Number seven is Milwaukee, our nation's other beer capital. Milwaukee really has a lot of the same pluses and minuses as St. Louis. Similar cultural amenities, great urban fabric in a lot of areas, some mistakes with freeway building, maybe not as many. I do like that there's some lakefront. And as we go through, I'm trying to show you good walkable neighborhoods in each city. This is Bayview. Lots of good old Midwest housing stock with some dense infill. You could definitely live car free here. Number six is Buffalo, which is also crazy affordable. I haven't featured this city at all yet on my channel and it does get cold, but you do get a lot of months that work pretty well for walking and biking. For a sample neighborhood, let's check out Elmwood Village. This is what I'm always looking for, a streetcar suburb feel with some denser infill housing. Buffalo was also pretty close to electing a socialist mayor in 2021 if having strong leftist politics is something you're looking for in a city. Let's move down the Lake Erie coastline 150 miles or so for number five, which is Cleveland. Some people were surprised to learn that Cleveland does have heavy rail. It also has the Health Line, which is one of the original modern BRT lines in the US. It's also got great close-in neighborhoods. This is Ohio City, which has the West Side Market, which you know I love. Ohio City has a metro station. It's got that great Midwest industrial city urban fabric, and the housing is ridiculously affordable for what you're getting. Okay, at this point, there's something I have to address. Most of the stuff on this list is Midwest or Northeast. So you're gonna get that kind of weather. If what you really want is a full 12 months of mild to beautiful weather, California style, then it's gonna cost you California prices. I mean, until they add like 3 million units of housing. And for me personally, the premium you have to pay for quote unquote good weather is just completely ridiculous. With the money you save on the differential between Cleveland and basically anywhere in California, you could probably buy a vacation home in Cabo and just go there for a few weeks every winter. Or really, get a Mexican visa and move to like Mexico City. Maybe that's the right answer to this whole question. Number four is New Orleans. It's just a unique American city. It's the birthplace of jazz. 
It has ferries and streetcars. I mean, what else do you want? Now, you would have to think hard about whether you really want to sink money into property in New Orleans or just rent. Eh, but there are lots of great neighborhoods. Let's drop in on uptown East Carrollton around Tulane University. Look at the architecture and, I don't know, just the trees. It just doesn't look like anything else in the U.S. And it is going to be warmer than other cities on this list, for better or worse. Eh, probably better. Okay, while you're trying to work out what the top three are, customary reminder to like the video if you do, in fact, like the video. Subscribe and hit the bell to get notified when your weekly fix gets uploaded. Check out my social media and my Patreon if once a week just isn't enough for some reason. And I'm gonna take a week off the usual subscriber count update. Instead, hey, I did hit 5,000 Twitter followers this past week, so thanks to all of you who engage on the Bird app. That's enough followers to fill Ron Tonkin Field, home of the Hillsborough Hops of the Northwest League, high A affiliate of the Diamondbacks. We'll just take a moment to appreciate the Hops mascot, which confusingly is named barley and notoriously resembles a completely different cash crop Oregon is famous for. Also, I'm changing the Twitter handle to my actual name, which you could have pretty easily figured out anyway if you're handy with Google, although if you did that, you're probably a stalker. Don't test me. I'm not above a restraining order. Dishonorable mentions, just not going to get into it. California is California. Finally, if you follow my channel, you probably know I'm living in Vegas, at least for a while, and you might wonder why I'm living in a city that's not on this list. Well, the answer is complicated, and I'll probably make a video about it at some point. I'm not a degenerate gambler or like an organized crime boss, if that's what you're thinking. Sorry to disappoint. Probably more along the lines of eh, just wanting to be in a purple state where my vote actually means something. Number three is Pittsburgh. Pound for pound, it's kind of like transportation Shangri-La. You've got cool bridges. You've got rail that runs below grade downtown. You've got a unique busway system. You've got multiple funiculars. You've got water taxis. So you can definitely economize on transportation and the housing is super affordable. And let's check out East Liberty, close in and right on the Martin Luther King Jr. East Busway. This is crazy value considering what you're paying. For number two, we are staying in the Keystone State. It's Philadelphia. You know, it's absolutely wild to me that this city is still sort of under the radar. It's an obvious, more affordable alternative to New York, but it's fantastic on its own merits. Great transit, great urban fabric, all the major sports, like six Division I basketball programs in six different conferences. Sorry, I'm a hoopaholic and that's like heaven for me. And then if you really think New York and DC are so great, or if you have an irrational but understandable fondness for Baltimore, you can hop a train and be there in like an hour or two. So that can be a day trip or like a cheap weekender. Anyway, great underrated city. And finally, number one is a city that is probably overrated by everyone who lives there, but underrated by everyone who doesn't. Yeah, it's time for this channel to pay proper respects to Chicago. So let's go through it. Fantastic, even iconic transit with great access to airports, stadiums, great neighborhoods, and obviously downtown. World-class cultural amenities. Airports with tons of nonstop destinations and great flight frequencies. Some of the highest bike score and walk score ratings of any city in the country. And check it out, the lowest freeway lane miles per capita of any metro area on this list. For a city that's still so affordable, Chicago does so many things right, just maybe not the weather. So sorry, Nia, I know Chicago wasn't the answer you wanted to hear, but yeah, it's the answer. And that's all I've got for this week. Thanks for joining. Special thanks to my patrons as always. And keep coming at me with topic suggestions down in the comments. I'll be back with a new episode next week, and I'll see you then.